So I'm here in North London at University College London Observatory, which is a, a fascinating historical observatory with several different telescopes dating back to 1929. I'm joined here by Giorgio Savini, who is a physicist at UCL London. And we've been discussing uh, not observing from the ground, but a, a very famous ESA mission uh, with NASA participation. And uh, Giorgio was the head of uh, calibration for the HFI instrument, high frequency instrument, is that correct? Yeah, I participated in calibration, I wasn't the head of it. Okay, uh, but uh, we've been discussing ways to observe the CMB, uh, the cosmic microwave background, which is the time of last scattering. Uh, that, that's just basically as far back as we can see, is that correct? Okay, so um, what's next in terms of, you're working on a new project called Lightbird uh, and many other projects, but f for the CMB, what is next in, in terms of observing the CMB and what do we hope to learn from Lightbird? So one of the things that remains unexplained uh, or uh, in, the, in the CMB domain, uh, well, one or two of the, the things that remain unexplained, one is the B modes, which is, uh, the detection of a very particular uh, pattern of polarization, um, a small fraction of the polarization of the cosmic microwave background, and that is considered to be the smoking gun of inflation. And how? And, 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 and tell us what you mean by polarization. How is this light polarized? So the, the light that we see from the last scattering surface, so the, the very first photons that were free to propagate, the majority of them is unpolarized, as you would expect from a thermal source. But uh, specific uh, um, variations in this surface, be it uh, density uh, or, co or caused by temperature density or, or, or fluxes, they will impart a small polarization to the actual uh, photons which arrive that we detect. And the, the way in which the, this polarization is measured allows us to uh, recover uh, information on what's happening at this last uh, scattering surface or in the moments before that. And uh, the one that is the most prized is the large-scale B-mode polarization, so a, a large pattern in the way in which this polarization presents itself that can only have been imparted from inflation. And uh, you're looking for signatures of, of gravitational, pr primordial gravitational waves, yeah. which would confirm Alan Guth's theory of inflation. Of, of inflation. Yeah. And inflation is very well accepted as a part of mainstream Big Bang cosmology, but it hasn't been detected to my, I mean, it hasn't been confirmed to my knowledge. Is that, is that correct? That's my understanding, yeah. So okay. Hopefully this will help prove that. So tell us a bit about uh, the observatory here. We're, you're standing in front of a refractor telescope, uh, which dates from when? So this is the Radcliffe Telescope. It actually comes from the Radcliffe Observatory in, in Oxford. It, it dates back to 1901. It's a Grubb telescope from Dublin. Um, it's uh, a 60 centimeter refractor and it's a twin, twin barrel. So I don't know if you can see it. And it's been now retrofitted with uh, a CCD, but it used to have photographic plates once upon a time, obviously. And so um, this is still, even though you can hear traffic outside, I mean, this is a busy suburb of London, not the kind of, we're not on some remote mountaintop in Chile, but you are still doing professional astronomy here. Not only, you're, you're using this observatory to teach, but you're also doing professional astronomy. That's right. We have five telescopes. Uh, this is one of them, but uh, this is not the only one. So two of them are robotic, which means that they can observe at any time of night and day. So uh, day is in, you know, even during the weekends. Uh, the primary function, as you mentioned, is teaching. So we teach our students, you know, the basics of astronomy to most advanced sort of data analysis techniques. Uh, but we still find uh, objects that we can investigate even from, from here. You know, there are, uh, we've detected exoplanets from here. We've discovered supernovas from here. Uh, there are still things you can do, even though you're not, as you mentioned, in Chile or Hawaii. And you mentioned about Margaret Burbage. Uh, who yes. actually worked here during World War II. She did. She, she, she not only um, uh, did her PhD here, uh, she, she, did some, she worked on spectroscopy, Gamma Cassiopeia, from a different telescope. It was the, the, 
the Wilson, I believe, in, in, the, in the main building. Um, she worked here until the, the sort of the early 50s before she, she left in the, uh, the UK. She, she basically covered the functions of the, uh, the then director uh, at the time. But in World War II, in 1944, you yeah. showed me a document that she was actually here when the bombing was, there, uh, there was some bombing going on. Yeah, so during the war, for obvious reasons, London was kept in the dark a lot to avoid you know, guiding planes with the lights of the city. So from an astronomical point of view, they saw that as an opportunity to do uh, you know, some of the best uh, dark sky observing possible. So they, they kept observing, they kept functioning. Not, so they, they kept using that telescope because it was a, ref, uh, a, a reflector. Uh, they had already stored the lenses of this telescope because they thought those were too valuable. Uh, but yes, so Margaret Burbage was observing during the Second World War, and uh, you know, in between bombings, they were able to do spectroscopy of stars. Amazing. So thank you so much for continuing the tradition and all your work. Uh, thank you for talking to us today, Giorgio. Thank you for coming. <laughs>